Hobby Life. Oh, it's under the thing. Hey guys, hello, everybody. Welcome to my page. My name is Tracy, and this is Tracy's Fancy, and I am in my shop tonight. Uh, I just went live on Dixie Bell's main page. I go live every Wednesday night at seven o'clock on their page. I am fancied up in my overalls and my Valentine tights for y'all, just for you. Um, and we just finished, we got this far over there, and uh, I decided to come on over here and get some molds, some keyhole molds glued on to my dresser here so that I can keep painting. Um, so please say hey when you come on. Matt is supposed to be uh, handling comments for me, so I can't see comments, but he has left the room. I'm so, right um, hey guys. He had to go get his Oreos and almonds. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, we are, uh, Matt, you going to hold that up for them so they can see that. I'm just adding the keyhole see molds. What? The keyhole. Oh. Uh, this You'll is what you bend to the drawers, these top drawers, the, the small drawers. Uh, and it'll look like that over there. And these molds are actually available on the Dixie Bell website um, by Would You Bend. You can get these. And uh, you don't have to put them around drawer holes. You can put them around anything. I love them because they, of course, remind me of Alice in Wonderland. And I'm, Hi going, guys. I'm going back over here and babysitting my paint because it was a little drippy right there. So I'm just going in and kind of blotting around my molds. Mary, Cheryl, Nina, Donna. Hi, guys. Hello, thank, you all, thank you all for joining me again over here. Uh, just get these molds on so I can continue the red painting on this side. So I know this looks crazy. This looks like a crazy piece. I dressed to match it because um, I want to look crazy too. Zadie, who's 14, said I looked crazy tonight. Huh. She was like, do you have to ask? I was like, do I look crazy? She was like, do you have to ask, Mom? That is horrible. It's a horrible outfit. <laughs> Hi, Bonnie. Uh, so anyway, I am going to do a romantic dresser and I'm hoping to I don't know if I'm my expectations are too high of myself but I'm planning to have it done by Sunday we shall see because Sunday's Valentine's Day we'll see we'll see what happens so the good thing about the molds is they are made of wood and they uh, adhere to the uh, tight quick and thick tight bond quick and thick really quickly I actually cut this mold up and made it work so that it goes around this hardware really well, just like this. So the roses are gonna come off of the sides of the hardware. I uh, just had that envision. I knew I had some Dixie Bell, uh, not, some uh, Dixie Bell Would You Bend molds with roses, and I wanted to use them because this piece is uh, focus is roses. You gonna name it? Am I gonna name it? Yeah. Uh, actually, I think I did on the Dixie Bell page. I think I said. I think I said romance and roses or something like that. I think once you put the mold on, you guys, it's nice to go back and just hit it with one more blast of heat, uh, soften it up and give it a nice press. And that way you know that the mold has really sucked onto the piece and then you can just start painting right over it. Um, babe, will you put that black brush in water for me or go rinse it yep. for me, please? Thank you. I will be away from the comments. Okay, not for long. So now, um, what have I done? If you're new and you didn't see what has happened already over on the Dixie Bell page, this piece was not gray, it was wood. It was a wood original finish. Um, and I primed it with the Dixie Bell Boss Primer and let that dry. We primed it and, and it really should dry longer than I just let it dry. I didn't let it dry very long, uh, but I'm gonna move forward and it works still, it really does, it still works. So now I'm just putting a coat of red over it. I'm gonna let this red coat dry overnight. But I'm gonna be using um, all sorts of reds and pinks on this piece, um, and even a little bit of black. This is gonna be a hand-painted rose, I hope, if it's a fail, I'm preparing myself. If I have a fail, I'm determined though, but I have to have plan B. You always gotta have a backup plan. So should it not turn out the way I'm envisioning it to turn out, I will just fill that in with maybe some, thank you baby, so 
some decoupage or stencil it or do a raised stencil or something like that. We'll see. We shall see. It's a challenge for me. What I'm, what I'm doing, what I'm planning to paint on there, I've never painted before. I mean, I, I, Matt reminded me that I have painted like realistic roses on a piece before, but it's been about 12 years. 12 years. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. So we'll see. You have a lot of people tuning in tonight. Yay, I'm glad. I'm glad. I want to hear what people are going to do for Valentine's Day because this is what I'll be doing. I know Del that's shocking. Delia says she loves your work and when she grows up, she wants to, to paint like you. Oh, God, <laughs> God love you. God love you. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's sweet. Bonnie's son tells her she's crazy all the time. Don Thompson is in. Hi, Don. Donna's in. Hi, Donna. Is it Kasia or Katia? Kasha. Is it Kasha? Okay, sorry, I'm not very <laughs> good with these new. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> hon, how new are ones. you? That's all right. Don't be distracted by your Oreos, babe. Tracy, can boss be used in a in a spray painter, a sprayer? Mm, I think so. I've never done it. I'm not a sprayer. I am the worst person to ask that question. Uh, but yeah, I think so. I think it can be. So, I mean, if the chalk mineral paint can be, it's thick. And boss is thinner than the paint. So, so yes. Donna's is looking for a suggestion. Uh, I have a redwood slick jewelry box. But noticed red on my rag when I cleaned it. Should I use slick stick and boss or scuff sand and only use boss? Uh, I would, I hesitate to say scuff sand when you have a bleeder because when you sand and you have a bleeder, it, it, it opens up the wood even more. That's my experience. So I would use both slick stick and boss and you don't have to, but that's what I've done. So if it is bleeder, I bought, I will, if it's a bleeder and it's super, super slick, like, uh, what are the standing jewelry Amars from, um, we've talked about this before y'all, uh, the old company, Bombay, Bombay and company, Bombay and company, Bombay and company's furniture. There are TV trays that people have sent me to do. There are uh, jewelry Amars. Those things guys that I don't know what they put in their baked on finish, but paint does not want to stick to it. It's very challenging. So I, if it comes to me and it's Bombay and Company or that, you know, super slick, ready sort of finish, um, I always put slick stick on it. And then if I feel like it was a bleeder as well, then I'd do a coat of boss on top of that after that dries. Um, do, the, do the slick stick by the instructions though. Put slick stick on, let it dry overnight, and then put a second coat on and let it dry completely. And then you can do just a single coat of boss and then start your paint. That's my suggestion. Tammy says she can't believe you're challenged by a painting because you're too good. Ah, you guys. Tammy, are... she gets she gets wound up on all of the paintings, and no matter how many she does and how good she is, before this video, she came out and says, "I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing." So it's okay. It always goes well. Babe, it always turns out. You be telling them my secrets. <laughs> Be telling him about my Teresa's gonna do uh be a penny a clock like a London phone booth. Imagine that! I'm gonna love it. Imagine that. I had so much fun painting that London scene. Um and doing that phone booth. That was a lot of fun doing that for Miss Linda. How cold is it, Janet? She's in Minnesota. Oh my She's gosh. Oh my gosh. I saw someone was just in Oklahoma. It's my cousin. My cousin sent pictures on Facebook from Oklahoma and the trees were completely iced over. I saved it. It was gray and icy trees with black tree trunks. Black was the only color in the picture because they were the tree trunks. It's supposed to snow here on Monday. And that was just in Oklahoma. I was like, what the heck? It was Tina. I saved the picture. I was like, I'm sharing that picture. It looked like Narnia. It, I honestly thought I would love to paint that. I, I would love to paint that scene right there. I'd way rather do a tree scene than roses but then it wouldn't be a valentine's piece right i love this color yeah. you'll see the difference though between when it's dry and when it's wet it's very very vibrant but as it dries it sort of tones down on its own um so let's move over here to the side Get this one. you're just 
having a feast over there. You just all kicked back, stuff in your face. I'm trying not to sit close to the camera so they, so they can't hear you chewing. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes at night, y'all, he's a nighttime eater, big time. We'll get in bed. A sugar bomb. Well, oh, he's having a low. Well, Oreos, by all means, Mr. Diabetes, is the way to fix it. That's a good, that's a good choice. Heaven forbid you eat an apple. Well, I can't find the little white thing that goes in the, in the glue. I don't know where it is. The little tip that goes in the glue. Can Misty still see me over here, babe? No. Where I've moved to? You, I know. Nope. Don't, don't want to interrupt your Oreo cookies. <laughs> And you're so cute when you're eating it. I'll kick back like that, too. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. So at night, we'll get in bed, and he shows up with his chips or cookies or whatever. And they're always in a noisy bag. It's always in a noisy bag. So I'm trying to watch a movie, and he's next to me. getting the bag. putting his, He goes elbow deep. Elbow deep. He can't, like, shake to the top of the bag and gently reach in and eat out. You know, he's got to elbow deep down, pull it out. And then he goes. And then elbow deep down and pull it out. And I'll just look at him, I'll just, and he'll turn around. He's like, what? <laughs> what? I'm like, it's so, you're being so loud. Who, who, who totally knows what I'm talking about? I can't help it. I get the nighttime hunger. Whoops. What'd you do? Did you turn us off? I fixed it. What'd you do? Um, I swiped up, and everybody that's on here, their name popped up. Oh. You learned something new? Under an ice storm warning tonight Who's in that? Arkansas, Northeast Arkansas. Did, who was it, Janet, that was in Minnesota? Did she answer you? I think it was Janet, yes. How cold it was? Did she come back and tell you? Uh, or did you ask her and then stepped back with your Oreos? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got tied up with my cookies. Tied up with your cookies. Oh my gosh. Do your drawers not stick closed because you're painting them while they're shut? Uh, no, because when we're done here, I'm going to open them. And, and which I thought I had a, I thought I had a screwdriver. And you'll, because I'm going to open them and, and finish off the sides. Will you, will you grab me one? <laughs> Heather's not sure these Oreos are AIP compliant. Uh, they're not. They're not. And you should have seen his face when he got home last night. We had Harlow. And she had been eating some. And <laughs> you should have seen his face when he opened the bag and saw what she had done. She had opened all the Oreos and scraped the, the stuff out of the middle and then put the little cookie parts back in the bag. So when he opened the bag, it was a bunch of empty, empty, <laughs> Oreo, nice. empty Oreo cookies that had been scraped out by a four-year-old. It's like putting the top of your jalapeno back in the jar. Or pickle. Gross. Or the butt end of your pickle. Yeah. Hey, babe, did you hear me ask you to get me a screwdriver? No, I didn't. That I can put in the hole so I can open this up okay. and do my drawer edges. Is that silk paint? No, no. <laughs> Everybody wants it to be silk. No, it's just chalk mineral paint. No, silk doesn't have, uh, the only bold color that silk has is uh, the blue. What red is that? This is Honky Tonk Red. And if you love us so much, I put my link on the video and you can click and you too can have Honky Tonk Red. Um, these are the colors I'll be using. So I'm using red. I'm gonna be using a deeper red. I'm gonna be using peony pink and muscadine wine and plum crazy and tea rose. These colors are the colors I'm gonna be using. Not all over the whole thing just on my rose in the middle, and then maybe doing some shading and shadowing around on the piece. Right now, I'm just base coating the entire piece before I, oh, look, I found the little thing. I found the little tip, found the tip. Uh, right now, I'm just base coating my piece before I get all fancy and funky with it. Okay, so I do open my drawers like so, and I don't, already primed them and just get up here and then I'll leave them open just do like this and I'll use it I won't do the sides yet because I'm gonna use a small brush because I want to keep my sides really clean I don't want to get any over bristle marks because I am planning on doing something pretty 
to the sides of the drawers. They're a nice raw wood, can you see? And I'm planning on doing black roses on them with the silk screen stencils like this. So you peel this off, you hold it in place, and then you use black paint or whatever you wanna use. Um, so these will have black rose patterns down the sides. So see this tiny edge right here? I don't wanna use my big fat brush because then I'll get bristle marks over here on the side. So I'm gonna wait until we're off or and pull out one of these and just use it to paint my sides with. But for the purposes of being on a video, um, I leave the drawers closed. Or if I'm color blending, I'll leave the, door, the drawers closed as well. Carol can't wait to see your progression. Thank you, Carol. You're always so Carol's always so supportive. Mm -hmm. Carol's in my in our group as well in Posh and Fancy. Julie says pretty colors. Who's this? Which do I know which Julie? There's so many. Julie Winfrey. Julie. Thank you. I said it was gonna look like a fire engine or a stop sign by the time we get done tonight. <laughs> and it does. Does. Oh, this is a big drawer, you guys. This is one of these weird French provincial buffets. I need another one, baby. Another uh, screwdriver, please, because it pulls open the whole, the whole thing. I'll get that side and I'll get this side. So I'm going to do, y'all don't go yet because I'm going to stand up and I'm, he's going to film me painting the top of this piece. Um, I've shown this many times before, but we always tend, when we're doing live painting, we always tend to paint only on the front of pieces. And um, I, I think it's important to talk to you about painting a long, flat surface. Um, and so I'm just going to show you my technique with painting long, flat surfaces. People usually like it. Um, it's very basic, but if you're a new painter, you might not, you might not know it. So I'm going to move, um, maybe, can you help me, um, move the stressor forward a little bit so I can get my booty back there in the back? Yep. All right. We're not going to go that far up, babe. That's good. stand behind it? Uh-huh. And then we can hand me the jar and the brush. And then we need to raise the lights up or something. Or the camera. Y'all hold please. You can just pick it up. Okay. All right. Here's my little demonstration. Uh, so, um, I'm even, I even have the narrow brush, so I don't even have a big brush with me. But I always stand behind my piece. I don't know why. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> um, I always stand behind my piece, and I keep my brush in one hand and my paint in the other. And it, this is a narrow brush. It would be probably smarter to use a little bit wider brush, but it doesn't matter. Um, as a matter of fact... I have not used the new Scarlet brush. I should get that. Hang on just a second. We'll try that. We're following you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I can try this. Let me let me do what I normally do up here. This is a new Scarlet brush. It's flat. Um, it's. I, I personally think that I'm gonna use it most to highlight and dry brush over uh, raised areas or my molds to do dusting and gold dusting and stuff like that. Um, but I really like the size of it. And it's very, very, very soft. So I don't know, we'll see. I'll demonstrate it with you guys. Don so, wants to know if this is a client's piece or if you're gonna sell it. It's, it will be available. I'm, I 
just finished several client pieces in a row and I needed something to just be free with. So thank you for asking. Um, thank you very much for asking. So it is gonna be available. It is. And hopefully it'll be ready Sunday. Okay, so what I do is I start right here on the front. Oh, I also need my water bottle. Let me grab that. Okay, so sometimes I'll go ahead and just take my water bottle and just do a light mist, just a mist across it just right across here. And I try to just work in small sections at a time. So I start right in the middle, just like this. And then I dip again and I go over here on the side like this. And I connect the middle to the side. And then I go over here to this side. You gotta move pretty fast, especially if you're working outside or if it's summertime or it's really dry where you are. Um, do the side and I connect. And then I just start on one end. And I you always go brush. with the grain? Always, I always do. Um, I take my brush and I just go from side to side, just like that. And I'm not pushing, I'm not like pushing with my brush. It's, it's very light in my hand. The brush is just sort of dragging lightly and naturally behind me. And this will give you a very, very minimal brush stroke finish, just like this. And then while this is section is still wet right here, um, you gotta keep moving. So I'll take my spray and I'll kind of miss that next section. So let's try this brush now. I haven't used this one before. Um, so I'll put it in like this, paint right here in the middle. Ooh, nice. I like the width of it. Ooh, it pushes the, ooh, I'm liking it. <laughs> I like, I might have a new favorite brush. I haven't played with this at all. Not at all. Really um, this one is not, this one's not available to order online yet. Um, I think some of the retailers have, oh my gosh, I love it. Okay. So then just let it just hang back and forth. I think that this is gonna be a really good brush for people that have arthritis in their hands, which I suffer from. So that is awesome. Okay, so again, spray what I have left. And we'll just use that again. Christina says she told you that you would love that. <laughs> she did, she did, and I haven't. Oh my gosh. Now, I don't see that this is gonna be a great brush to use like on the front of those drawers where you've got molding and roses and framed out areas you know i don't think it's going to work like for that as well but for flat surfaces my canvas painting i think this is going to be great for my canvas painting as well all right so back up to my spot and just side to side sort of letting it drag moving it one way to the other and that well. is it <clears throat> That's it. And then I'll take, you know, one of the, I'll take this brush and come back up here. And a lot is already here on the edge. Most of the time you don't even need to dip back in. And I just kind of drag it. I'll come back and touch it up when it's like, I don't really want to get my brush strokes on the top of my dresser there. But now while it's still wet on the front here, it's okay because you're going left to right. So I don't worry about this as much. I can get up here and go left to right. I can get up into that top of that, where that paint is. And it not be a problem. Paula just uh, hopped on here. She's wondering what's the purpose of spraying with water? Uh, the chalk mineral paint is very thick, which I love. As you notice, the whole front of the piece, I did not spray with water at all. I wanted really good coverage and I didn't spray with water. Everybody's really digging the red. I know. No one's using it. No one, no one wants to paint with red. Everybody wants everything to be white and gray. <coughs> So if you use a little bit of water first, it, you'll, you just have to try it. Just trust me. Trust us when we say, try it with a little bit of water. It really makes it move like melted butter. Whereas this way it's a little bit thicker, you get better coverage, but you have to, you know, you need to be a little better with using it. When you put the a little spritz of water on it, oh my gosh, it moves, it just moves beautifully. But what happens is you end up thinning it out that way and you will for sure, most of the time, for sure, you know, it just sort of means you're gonna to have to do two coats for sure once you've added water. Like this top, I'll have to do another coat on. The front, I wouldn't have to if I don't want to because I just did it with a single coat. But adding the water also really helps to eliminate brush strokes because of it. the paint will self-level by itself. I feel really crazy in this outfit. Uh, the paint will self-level by itself, but, uh, but adding a little bit of water really helps with that. And then doing that really light brushing over the top does will also help you with brush strokes. I don't wig out about brush strokes that much, you guys, but a lot of people do. So, 
Anyway, that's it. Happy pre-Valentine's Day. Um, I can't wait to keep working on this piece. Uh, my staging wall is looking like crap. I looking hate pretty it. rough. <laughs> it's like we have put so many holes in this wall, um, but you know, that's okay. That's all right. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Have a good rest of your week. Thank you for joining us here tonight. And um, take care of yourselves, and we'll see y'all next week. See, I'll see y'all Friday morning for Coffee Talk, okay? Friday morning for Coffee Talk. My link is here on the video description. Use that link if you want to try some Honky Tonk Red or any of those other colors that I showed you um, yourself. All right? I really appreciate it. Thank y'all so much. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. -bye. Bye,